Hey, this is Asaf Levavi from LickinRef.com and it's time for another viewer request. And in this video we're gonna learn an extreme fingerstyle version of Happy Birthday. What do I mean by extreme version? I mean that usually when you learn Happy Birthday on guitar you just learn the two chord version, the C and G7 version. And in fingerstyle it can sound something like this. Okay? And you can harmonize it way better than that. Um, now, usually when you play Happy Birthday, you think like a guitar player. And if you want to harmonize things better, you can think like a piano player. And that approach works here. So you asked for a better version than the two chord version. And I sat down and tried to think how can I harmonize this better? So I'm going to play it for you um, and you're going to see what I came up with and you'll see that it sounds more like a piano version than a guitar version and sometimes when you make a guitar arrangement that's what you need to do. You need to think like a different instrument. Um, so I'm going to play it for you and then we're going to break it down lick by lick with tabs on the screen and everything. So enjoy. It goes like this. Okay, so I hope that now you understand what I'm saying about playing this like a piano player would play it instead of a guitar version. Um, but you can play it in various different ways and I'm going to show it after we learn it. So first let's learn it. You begin with the open G string twice. Okay, and then you put on the bar F chord on the first fret and you play strings three, four, and six, right? And then you play the G chord. You can just put the bass note on, the G bass three on the E bass, and again, play strings three, four, and six. Okay, so it sounds like this. Okay, and then you put on the C chord, and you play strings two, three, and five. And then you put that G chord again, um, just using uh, one finger for the bass note, and you play strings two, three, and six. Okay? So you get this line. You can either play the G string twice more, okay, or you can play the G chord once and then the G string again, okay, uh, for emphasis. And then you play the first F and G uh, chords the same way you did before, okay, with uh, strings uh, 3, 4, and 6. Or, okay, for another chord. Um, and then you play G7 over B. Now, I'm going to explain why in a minute, but first of all, um, it's this voicing of G7. Okay, with one on the E string and three on the B string. Um, and you play the B bass on two on the A string, so it sounds like this. Okay, now you can play strings one, two, and five, or one, two, three, and five. Okay, and then you play the C chord, and again, you can either play strings one, two, and five, or one, two, three, and five. Okay, and this creates a voice leading, because the main melody is this, Okay, and the bass notes play, and the um, E string plays, okay, the third harmony. So, 
Okay, and if you add the G string, then there's a note that just stays put, and it's and it's also uh, it's also a harmony. It serves as a harmony for all the rest of the notes. So uh, that's the choice of the G7 over B instead of just G7 because we've already played G. We've played okay, and if we go to G7, then the harmony uh, is only on the top notes. But if we change the bass to B, then we have a voice leading into C. That's what I. Uh, that's what I'm saying when I think uh, when I say think like a piano player would think. A piano player would think about changing notes all the time, including the bass notes. So um, that's one way to look at the guitar when you create your own uh, finger style arrangement. Okay. So um, the second uh, the second line was again G string or G chord. Then F G G seven over B. C. Okay, so right now we have this. Okay, um, let's call out the chords. F, G, C, G. F, G, G7 over B, C. Okay, and then. Okay, the open G string again, or the, along with the C chord at the beginning, uh, with the first G note, you don't have to. And then A minor 7, um, you just, if you're on C, and you are, you just take the bass note off to have an open A string and put your pinky on 3 on the E string on the G note, which is the 7 of the A minor chord, and we have an open G string, which is also a G note, so we have uh, a, a, an octave, a G octave on upon the A minor chord. Okay, so we have a beautiful voicing of A minor 7. Okay, so we had, okay? And then you take the pinky off and play an open E string. And then you play one on the B string. And then you play E minor and you play strings two, three, four, and six. And then F. And again, you play strings two, three, four, and six. So we have this. Okay, now you, when you play the F chord, you can just play strings. Uh, if you want to emphasize the melody, leave the second string out of it and play strings three, four, and six. But I like the fuller sound. Um, again, it's your choice. Um, so A minor seven, E minor, F. Okay. Now the final line. Okay, one on the E string, it's already inside the F chord. And then C, play strings one, two, three, and five. And then F, and you play strings two, three, four, and six. And then you play G7, okay? That voicing again, this time with the G bass. Um, so again, it's one on the E string, two, uh, three on the B string, open G string, and the G bass. So we have and C. Okay, it's the same voice leading, but this time the bass notes go, okay, dominant to uh, root. Um, so um, again, on C, it's the same uh, strings, it's strings one, two, three, and five. So, from the top, F, G, C, G, F, G, G over B, G7 over B, 
to C. A minor 7. Now you can also uh, pull off the, the pinky. Then E minor, F. Okay, E string on 1. Uh, C, F, G7, C. Okay, and that's it. That's uh, the extreme version of Happy Birthday. Now you can play it in different styles. You can play, you can strum the chords. You can pick different strings between chords wherever you get the chance. Okay, you can delay the next line. Okay, you can create your own version of this. Delaying the next line is a wonderful method of creating drama in music. Okay, that was too much. Something like that. I was trying to show you different ways uh, and different rhythms. Now you can change the rhythm entirely. Uh, for example, let's see if I can come up with something interesting. Um, um, okay, something like that. Um, or you can even completely go berserk and play something completely um, unexpected, like a Latin rhythm. Let's see if I can come up with something. Mm. something like this. Um, it all depends on your creativity and what you can try to come up with. Um, I'm just showing you different examples. Um, okay, so that's my suggestions and before you go please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. There's a ton of lessons on the channel already and you can ask for, ch um, for lessons. I take requests, just keep in mind that there's a never-ending request list and there's no way I'm going to get around to everything but I'm going to try and I'm going to do my best and go to the website download the tab it's for free just like the lesson is just like all the lessons are but if you want to give something back there's a donation button on the channel uh, on the website and I'd be grateful for any donation whatsoever the donations keep Lick and Riff going and help me produce more lessons now, um, you go practice this, create your own version, have fun, and just um, play it for people who celebrate their birthday, or not, or just play it for fun, um, because it's fun. So I'll let you go practice, go get this under your fingers, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.